Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a fantasy drama film. Fluke. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins on an alley road behind a restaurant where a tri-colored golden retriever gives birth to three beige puppies and one brown puppy. They stay in the alley because the restaurant owner feeds them every day until they grow up. One unfaithful day, the animal control staff arrive at the alley to catch the five dogs. Soon, they bring the five dogs to the animal center for adoption. Eventually, the three beige puppies are successfully adopted except the brown puppy, who's still in the cage. The supervisor orders the staff to put the brown puppy to sleep, since no one's adopting him. On the day of his schedule to the burner, the brown puppy escapes from his cage, right after the staff opens the door. He whimpers as he tries to reach his caged mother dog in the cell, but the staff is right behind him, so he runs out of the building to escape the impending doom. He then goes to a nearby elementary school, where a student approaches him and caresses his ear. Upon feeling the touch of the student, a memory flashes in the brown puppy's mind. He remembers a young boy waving at him. At night, the brown puppy searches for a place to sell. He shortly ends up in the slums, where a tramp named Bella warmly beckons him to come. Together, they sleep peacefully. While Bella slumbers, the brown puppy stares at the ring on her hand, recalling a man proposing to a curly blonde woman. The following day, Bella brings the brown puppy to the busy street, waiting for people to give her money. Even though no one's giving them money, Bella keeps a positive outlook and plays a little nutshell game with the brown puppy. The brown puppy always guesses where the gem is hidden, resulting in great exposure for them. Soon, passing strangers notice the brown puppy's intelligence, so they leave money in Bella's can. One of the audience's comments that it's only a fluke, and Bella agrees that the brown puppy is indeed her fluke. At night, Bella manages to earn enough money to buy themselves some Chinese takeout, and then creates a collar for the brown puppy with the name, Fluke. Bella falls ill in the coming days, until the sickness spreads, killing her in the end. Now, poor Fluke is left alone on the street again. The following day, a streetwise bully dog, who prefers to name himself Rambo, talks to him without barking, and invites him to a place to eat. Fluke asks first about Bella, and Rambo explains to him that Bella had to move to another place, possibly heaven. Together, Fluke and Rambo travel the street to search for food. En route, Rambo teaches Fluke the proper way to pee like a dog. They continue, but Fluke falls off the fountain in the park. Rambo tells him that dumping into a pool of water is the best way to remove their fleas. Finally, they arrive at a hot dog stall in a market, and Rambo introduces their new master and store vendor to Fluke. The vendor warmly welcomes them, and then feeds them hot dogs. Afterward, the two dogs eventually bond together on an open field. Later, Rambo brings Flute to his real guardian, who owns a scrapyard. Rambo advises Flute to allow the guardian to touch him, so the guardian can let him stay in his scrapyard. He also tells Flute the best shades to sleep on in the scrapyard. Soon, Flute and Rambo arrive at the scrapyard, and the guardian giddily welcomes Flute, since he's a very cute puppy. At night, Flute dreams about a car crash. He abruptly wakes up and then asks Rambo if they'd always been a dog and not a human. His question aggravates Rambo to act defensive. Rambo tells Flute to forget about his dream and simply just sleep, since they have no use for them. Rambo eventually leaves Flute to let him sleep without telling him a bedtime story. A year later, Flute grows into a beautiful brown dog. Flute and Rambo discover a pastry truck on the road filled with pies and cakes. While Rambo enjoys a pie, Flute recalls another memory upon seeing the wedding cake, where he sees the curly-haired woman and the man getting married. They flee the truck when the truck driver catches them eating a pie. Next, they go to the vendor's food stall to get more food. As the vendor cooks his order, a customer named Thug steals the food. Flute barks at Thug because he's a bad person overall. Thug then leaves with his order and intentionally steps on Rambo's tail, provoking Flute to bite Thug's leg for hurting Rambo. Thug accuses the vendor of taking care of violent dogs in the market, but the vendor defends the dogs and tells him to leave them alone because his presence is scaring the dog shit out of the dogs. Soon Rambo and Fluke lead the market and roam out on the street for some dog fun. Just then, Fluke stops in front of a newspaper stand and stares at a magazine. The magazine cover portrays a business owner named Jeff who released an expensive car part on the market. Fluke experiences another flashback upon seeing Jeff's face. He remembers Jeff talking to a man who angrily shattered the expensive car part on the floor. On the same day, Thug reports Rambo and Fluke to the Guardian for biting him. Fortunately, the Guardian defends his dog and says they won't attack unless provoked. Besides, the two dogs are properly maintained with their anti-rabies shots. However, Thug still threatens the Guardian to report his dogs to the Animal Control Center if he doesn't pay him compensation for the bite. The Guardian then is forced to pay Thug a fee just to make him leave. Thug then departs upon receiving the payment, leaving the Guardian mad at the two dogs. 
Rambo escapes and deserts Fluke, while Fluke stays behind and suffers from a punishment. At night, the Guardian ties Fluke to a vehicle and lets the rain pour down on him. Just then, another memory pops into his mind, showing the curly-haired woman giving birth to a baby who grew up into a handsome boy. While Fluke idles in a convertible car, he hallucinates a telephone number on a car plate. Fluke goes to the Guardian's house and dials the number himself. The telephone rings until a woman's voice answers the phone, revealing the curly-haired woman in his dream is real. The Guardian catches Fluke lurking in his office, causing Fluke to escape at the back door. The Guardian answers the call and tells the curly-haired woman that she called them because it's impossible for his dog to use the telephone. Afterward, Rambo and Fluke roam the street, and Fluke tells Rambo that they were people who had a family before. Fluke wants to see his old family, which keeps appearing in his dreams, but Rambo is unhappy with his wish. Rambo walks out and leaves Fluke alone. Fluke chases after Rambo, but Fluke is surprised to see Thug anticipating his appearance. Thug orders his men to capture and deliver Fluke to the cosmetic company they work at. There, the beauty technician uses Fluke as a test subject for beauty products. Throughout the test, Fluke recalls a car crash that resulted in the death of the man we kept seeing in his memory. Meanwhile, the technician is happy with the results of what Fluke portrays. Just then, Rambo breaks into the laboratory, attacks the technician to knock him down, and saves every captured animal in the room. Thug leaves to call for the guard, but he sees all animals have escaped upon his return. Thug then rushes to the shattered window and sees Rambo and Fluke are still around. He orders the guard beside him to shoot at the dogs, but the guard refuses. Thug then impulsively grabs the gun and shoots. Fluke and Rambo luckily escape from the laboratory and go to a nearby lake. Rambo drinks from the water as he falls tired. Fluke then notices that Thug has shot Rambo in the back, but Rambo endures the wound just to guide Fluke out of the premise. Fluke knows Rambo's about to die, so he begs him to stay with him. However, Rambo can't make it anymore. Therefore, Rambo admits something to Fluke during his final moments. It turns out Rambo was a sailor when he was previously a human. His brother was the exact vendor who he returned to when he became a dog. Rambo enjoys being a dog, but he sometimes misses the salty sea breeze. Fortunately, Rambo is glad to be friends with Fluke, hoping that they meet again in his next life. Alone, Fluke decides to seat the curly-haired woman and the boy he sees in his dreams. The curly-haired woman is his wife, and the boy is their son. The man in his dreams is Fluke himself, when he was still a human named Thomas. Fluke remembers his son's school, so he visits him and waits for his class dismissal. The school hours end, and Fluke searches for his son in the crowd of students. He eventually recognizes his son and wife in the parking lot. Fluke pounces onto the car door, startling the wife completely. She shoos him away, but the son convinces his mother that Fluke seems harmless. She then ignores Fluke and drives the car away as they travel home. Fluke chases after them until they arrive home. Fluke persistently barks at the front door to attract their attention, but the wife maintains a cold demeanor towards Fluke. Fortunately, Fluke manages to earn his son's sympathy, who begs his mother to keep Fluke temporarily until they find his original guardian. The wife loves her son, so she eventually accepts Fluke into their house, where they even bathe him together on the front lawn. At night, the son plays with his miniature toy soldiers in the living room, and Fluke hides one of his toys under the couch. When the son finds the toy, he remembers his late father, who used to hide his toys too. It's bedtime, and Fluke sneaks out of the laundry room to visit his son in his bedroom and tucks him under the blanket. He then lastly goes to his wife's room and sleeps beside her. The next day, Fluke spends time with his wife and son, more than he ever did when he was still a workaholic father. He also tries to show his wife that he's her dead husband, but she only gets sadder whenever she remembers her true love. At night, Jeff comes to visit Thomas' wife and son. His mere presence provokes Fluke to attack him violently, forcing the wife and Jeff to take him outside the house. Jeff reports Fluke to the Animal Control Center, even though the boy is against it. Fluke tries to enter the house as he barks constantly at Jeff. The wife can't help but wonder what's gotten with Fluke all of a sudden. Suddenly, the cops arrive at the house to catch Fluke, but Fluke hides behind the bushes to evade them. It's a rainy midnight and the son sneaks outside to bring Fluke into his room. Then, he overhears his mother and Jeff talking inside her room. The mother doesn't want to bring Fluke into a dog pound because of their notorious reputation, and most importantly, she cares about her son's decision. The next morning, Fluke follows Jeff into their company building, where he sneaks and evades the passing employees working inside. Just then, Fluke enters his former office, overhearing Jeff planning a date with his wife. While Jeff leaves his office that's adjacent to Thomas' office, Fluke remembers his human self Thomas, sitting on the office chair. Suddenly, Jeff barges into the room upon hearing the ringing telephone on Thomas's desk. Jeff answers the call and hears the wife worriedly crying. 
she briefs that her son is missing because he's busy searching for Fluke, so she pleads to him to help her search for her son. Fluke suspects Jeff as his murderer, based on the memories he recalls with Jeff and them. Jeff was the last person he saw when he was a human, and now he wants to steal his family too. So that night, Jeff drives quickly to the White's house, while completely oblivious to Fluke's presence in the backseat. Fluke attacks Jeff to cause an accident, which is the same way Jeff allegedly killed Thomas. Fluke believes he finally avenged himself, until a new revelation appears. Instantly, Fluke receives another flashback about the real car accident. His human self, Thomas, had a fight with Jeff about their product release. Jeff walked out of the building because Thomas denied his release of the car part on the market. Jeff rode his car, and Thomas chased after him on the road. Jeff tried to calm down Thomas, as their car speed increased every second. Thomas missed the upcoming truck in front of him, forcing him to swerve off the road, resulting in the car hitting a tree. Jeff immediately stopped his car to save Thomas from death, but it was too late. Jeff cried over the unexpected death of his best friend. At the present time, Fluke instantly regrets hurting Jeff upon realizing that he's always been a real friend to him because it's all Thomas's fault in the end. Fluke limps towards Jeff's car and licks the wounded and dazes Jeff on the driver's seat. Jeff wakes up and stares at Fluke, finally realizing it's Thomas himself. Jeff remains free from grudge and even asks Fluke to look for his son because the snow starts pouring. However, Fluke can't leave Jeff alone while wounded, so he barks at the passing driver to alert him about the crash. The passing driver helps Jeff, allowing Fluke to run free and search for his son. Meanwhile, the wife deduces that her son is at Thomas's graveyard due to his drawing. While searching in the words, Fluke also senses his son is at his graveyard. Fluke arrives near his son first, where they huddle together to keep themselves warm against the freezing snow. The wife eventually reaches the graveyard and breaks open the gate. She brings her son inside the car and opens the heater for him. The son recovers his strength and tells her his vision of Fluke telling him not to get sad, just because he needs to leave them. The wife wants to keep Fluke for her son. She then looks at Fluke and approaches him near Thomas's graveyard. Fluke digs up the snow to reveal the engraved epitaph, forever, at the bottom of the tombstone. She finally realizes Fluke's identity is her beloved husband, because Thomas used to say forever when he was alive. Heartbroken and relieved, she let Fluke go, watching him dashing away from the graveyard as the snow pours over them. The movie ends with Fluke finally accepting the truth that he's now a dog who needs to be happy for his wife and son to enjoy more worthwhile days with Jeff. His time as a human is over, and it's time for him to cherish the days fully unlike before. One day, Fluke happily reunites with Rambo, who is now reincarnated as a squirrel. Together, the two best friends share with one another the new wisdom they have learned as animals. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.